found out a little bit about a topic that I was completely unfamiliar with at the HTML5 Dev Conference in San Francisco last week. The topic is functional programming. Grabbing a script that I wrote recently, it modifies the Google search page in a not so serious way. There's a few patterns of code that I'm going to abstract here. The first is a caching function. Each of my public methods are either setting or retrieving variables or caching values in these local variables. And I'm just going to formalize that in this function that I'm setting up. Turns out, as I read about this subject, uh, JavaScript is an excellent program for functional programming. One of the reasons is functions in JavaScript are objects, just like anything else is. And this method that I'm creating is going to leverage that. So I've set up a local pointer variable to my function, and I'm going to use that to set a property straight onto the function. The private cache property that I'm setting up is an object itself. And it's within this object that I'm going to cache the variables instead of using local variables. And in the function signature, I set up key and value as the arguments to be passed in. They're both going to be optional. If cache is called without any arguments, the return value is just going to be the cache object itself. If only the key is specified, then the value of that key specifically is going to become the return value. And if both a key and a value are supplied, then that key is going to be set to that value, and then the cache object is going to be returned. So now I can call this cache function, but first I need to make sure that it's part of the return value so it becomes public. Once I've made it public, then I can call the method, and then I can inspect my object, which I don't have anything in there right now. So I'm going to go down the list of public functions that I have, starting with this id method, to start applying this caching function that I set up. I'm going to incrementally convert each function and I'm going to check each step of the way to make sure that nothing gets broken as I convert the, the methods. So while I'm setting up this new caching function I'm kind of doing double duty here. I'm maintaining the local variable assignment as well. At least initially I just want to see those values getting set in the cache object. Once I see that they are then I can start applying this a little bit more. I'm going to switch over my references to the local underscore target variable to start using the target value in the cache object. Changing just that one instance, I see only red now, so I know that there's other instances to be updated. So I'm going to get those other references updated as well. I'm just kind of scanning through here to make sure I'm not missing any. We have a couple more here at the top we'll take care of. Here I'm assigning the value, so I'll switch that over as well. And I'm going to remove the local variable assignments that we have in ID, as well as I'll remove where I'm declaring the variables up here at the top. And I'm just going to continue down the list, starting here with content. All of my public methods are caching a value. Uh, some of them, that's all they're doing, while others are caching a value and doing something a little bit more on top of that. For instance, content is capturing the value for content, as well as setting the inner HTML on the current target. So I'm going to double check cache to make sure I see my values in there. And again, I'm just going to continue down the list. Note the for loop in the CSS function. I'll be coming back to this to replace this with the, another utility function that I'll be creating. But for now, I'm just going to complete my first pass at applying this cache function. The next two to convert are style and format. cache the style value like this, and when I test, I see an error, which means I have additional references that need to be updated as well. And that takes care of the error. I'll remove format so I can change that too. Cache format like this. And I'm slowly but surely getting to the bottom of the list. Next is container. It's just caching a value. And when I test, I see an error, which means I have another reference that needs to be updated. And that fixes it up. Next is HTML. It's also just caching a value. I know HTML is being referenced elsewhere, so I'm going to change that before I test. 
Next is insert. It caches a value like the others, but it's doing it within this conditional. It also references the value down here in the switch statement. And the last one is element. It's used in the insert function. It's referenced twice, first for the creation of the element. I'll cache it like this instead of using the local variable. It's referenced here for setting the inner HTML. And then it's referenced here in the switch statement for insertion. And then after I insert it, I cache it. I'm going to take a quick look to make sure that I'm caching everything that I need to. Each of my public methods are returning an instance of this script. This is so I can support chaining. And since all my public methods are doing this, I'm going to abstract it. I'll be setting up a few local variables within the function, but the first one I'm going to be looking at is scope. Scope is going to capture the context of the executing function as well as the context for the chain. The next local variable is a pointer to the function itself. And the last one is a local variable for the arguments. Args is going to be a converted version of arguments. Arguments is available to every function. It's like an array, but it's not a true array. So this is how I convert it to a true array. I want it to be a, a real array because I want to use the shift function of an array. Shift is the counterpart to pop where it will remove the first item of the array. The first and second argument of chain are defining the scope and the function. What remains in args will be applied to the function that I pass in. So now I'm ready to use this function in each of my public methods. Instead of returning this directly, I'm going to call chain. Chain is going to pass the scope and then the function to be applied. And now I'm going to continue down the list of public methods doing the same. Like with the other method, I want to test each time I convert each function, just to make sure that everything's still looking good, nothing's breaking in the browser. I'll spare you the busy work and I'll speed this up a little bit. Remember when I was pointing out earlier the for loop? I mentioned that I would be creating a utility function for that. Map is going to be that utility function. You're probably familiar with the each function of the jQuery library. Well, this is the same kind of idea. Setting up iteration in JavaScript uh, usually means a lot of typing. So by abstracting it into a utility function like this, we can save ourselves some time. Using has own property, I can make sure that I'm only iterating properties that are direct to the object. When I know I'm dealing with the right kind of property, then I can take the function and I can apply the key and the value of the key. So now I'm going to find that for loop so I can use my new map utility function. So now I can use map, give it the object, and then the function that I want applied to each property of the object. I'll take the code here and put it within the function. I have a handful of functions within my closure that are functions that are said to have side effects. Side effects because they're making some presumptions about the environment where my JavaScript is running. Turns out I'm in the browser, so methods like get element by ID, enter HTML, create element, those are all natively supported. But let's say I wanted my script to have more reusability than that. Let's say, for instance, I wanted it to work at the command line, or with Node.js, or with Rhino. That considered, I can't assume get element by ID, enter HTML. I can't assume those things are going to be there, so I'm going to supply the implementation. So now that I've supplied the implementation for get element by ID, I can go down into my script and modify it like this. 
So I'm just going to continue down the list, supplying the implementation of each of these methods. The method that I'm using to convert arguments to an array may be safe across environments. I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't hurt to supply it, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Again, I'll spare you the busy work and I'll speed this up a bit. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the cache function of util to look up the current target. And by doing that, I can see that it's set to input. When I call the form attribute on that, I can submit the form.